Welcome! Today we're going to throw a sink, a pottery sink for a bathroom. And as you can probably hear, my voice is not the best. <laughs> I just had an infection in my throat, but I'll try and get through it. I'll probably talk a little bit less and some of you will probably enjoy that. But um, let's just move on with it. I've never actually done a sink before. <laughs> so this is going to be my first time and it's not going to be one of those here's an expert showing you exactly how to do something. It's rather going to be a journey. <laughs> so I hope you will follow me and uh, explore this interesting part of pottery. I do, however, did some research and uh, basically a sink is just a bowl with a hole. Of course, as always, when you do functional wear, there's a few things that you need to um, keep in mind. One of them, of course, is the hole for the water to run out. And for that, you need a fitting. And uh, as always, when you do pottery that needs to fit something, I had the same issue when I was doing my lamp bases and I need to fit the lamps and stuff, it's a good idea to go and buy the fitting that you're gonna use. It's probably different for different countries. I live in Denmark, and in Denmark, most of these uh, fitting for um, bathroom sinks is one and a quarter inch wide. So that's one of the important parts. There needs to be a hole and needs to fit this. And I need to take into account shrinkage. The clay that I'm going to use have a shrinkage rate, a total shrinkage rate of about 10%. So the hole needs to be about 10% bigger than to fit this. It can be a little more than that because it's okay that it wiggles a little bit because it's gonna be tightened. So I would rather make it just a little bit too big than too small because trying to make it bigger after it has been bisked is not that easy. And there's a risk of cracking and stuff. So, I mean, even, even though there are tools that can potentially scrape off a little bit, it's much easier to get the right size from the beginning. Another consideration when doing a sink is uh, the shape. I'm gonna do a shallow bowl. I don't want it to be too high because then on top of the table, it's gonna be difficult to use the sink. So it's not gonna be more than, I think like 15 centimeters or something like that, maximum, maybe even 12. And also for a sink, it's even more important than with a normal bowl that the flow, the the, the continuous flow is, is smooth. You want the water to run down and run out. So even though I do love textures on a lot of my bowls, even sometimes on the inside, I'm not gonna do that on a sink because I want the water to flow without any friction. And also I want it to be easy to clean the bowl. So nothing, you know, that can hide bacteria or dirt or kelp from the water or anything. And also, when we get down to the bottom, of course you need the hole for the fittings. But also, I want to have it a little, uh, a little sort of a curve on the last part. So I'm sure that all the water is running into the fitting. I've seen uh, sinks where the last part is a little bit of a bulb. You hardly see it, but it's enough for the water to uh, sort of pool up there. And that will leave dirt and calc over time. And well, we don't want that. So on top of this uh, width, uh, I need that to, to go into the hole. So the hole is this size. And then I'm gonna make a little bit bigger where I just add a little bit of indentation or something you could call it. So I'm sure that this part falls below the surface of the inner wall. So that's the only tricky part. Besides that, is really just a bowl. At least <laughs> for this kind of sink. Because of course there are basically two types of sinks. One that you um, install into a cabinet or into a, a, a table where it kind of sinks into it and evens out with the, with the top. And one where you put it on top of, um, of, your, of your table, uh, your bathroom table. And uh, I'm gonna do the last one. It's uh, easier 
to do. And I like that, you know, it, it becomes like a, a sculpture in your bathroom and you can see more of it. You can also see the outside. So on the outside, I may do some textures because there you don't have the, the water flow and, and other issues with it. So I may do that just a little bit of texture to grab the glazes and make it more interesting. The last part you need to consider is the clay. I am going to do it in stoneware. Uh, potentially, of course, you could also do it in, uh, in porcelain. I'm not sure earthenware would be a good idea. You need something that is strong because it is going to be used and people are going to drop things uh, into the sink and you don't want it to chip off or anything. So I'm going to use stoneware, which I normally use in my workshop. Um, but I'm going to use a stoneware with uh, a decent amount of grog. I want it to be as strong as possible. Also, I want the walls on this to be extra thick. You're not going to carry this around, it's going to sit there. So the weight, the final weight doesn't matter. But you want the walls to be strong. And especially the rim, I want the rim to be extra thick and strong. Which also means that I should probably dry it a little bit slow. So I'm going to cover it up at least for the first few days so it doesn't warp around too much. Enough with the talking. My, <laughs> my throat is not so good, so let's start with the throwing. I'm going to start out with roughly about six kilo of clay. This particular one is going to be 30, maybe 35 centimeter wide. Uh, I'm aiming for something that's about 30 centimeter when it's final, so a little more than 30 centimeter to begin with. I wouldn't use six kilo for that if it was just a bowl, but as I said, I need more thickness for the sink. So let's uh, move on with that. This clay is a little bit on the stiff side. It's uh, been been stored in my basement for, well, a little longer than it should, I guess, but it's actually okay uh, for this. I need uh, stability, so um, it's going to take a little more strength, but um, I think I'm going to be okay. I'm so strong. <laughs> So now, I think it's uh, pretty decent centered. Um, I'm just gonna check it an extra time here. But yeah, it feels good and even. And now I'm ready to open it up. And um, since I'm gonna have a shallow bowl, um, 
I'm not going to open it up the, the usual way. I will use a combination, um, but mostly I'm going to use uh, the palm of my hand. And that's also going to secure a very strong uh, compression. And I want that. I want this clay to be super compressed. Just take it easy. Um, this is, as I said, a little bit too stiff, so it's going to take some time to get down there. Yeah. Getting closer. It's always a little bit tricky uh, when you're working with big uh, lumps of clay and especially when you want a very thick button to, um, to know how thick it is. So you can always use a potter's needle, I'm going to stick it in here. And yeah, it shouldn't be any thinner there. It's about one and a half centimeter or something. It should not be any thinner than that. And of course, if this was a bowl, I would either um, make it thinner or end up trimming a foot because this is too thick for, for a normal ball. But for a sink, it's going to be good. Yeah. This is not so bad. I think I'm still going to expand it a little more. When I will do more details on the inside, I will move the camera a little bit so you can better see it. But uh, now I'm just focused on getting the basic shape of it. Um, so the curve, um, continuous curve, so the water will run down into the drain. And then I'm going to work on the, on the sides. So I'm going to lift this um, up. I'm going to start out not pulling it out too much. I can always widen it. As you know, it's easy to widen. It's a lot more difficult to narrow it. So, um, and of course, there are different techniques with this. Some potters like to pull it out into the width directly. I like to keep it a little more controlled to begin with and, um, and pull it a little more upright. So I'm going to do the first pull. And as I said, I'm going to leave quite a lot of clay at the top. I can always thin it out, but it's difficult to get more clay up there if I have too little. Compress the rim. I 
have a bit at the bottom that I can pull up. Yes, definitely looking good. Of course, right now it's too high. I want a more shallow, but um, the start expanding the, the width, it will uh, drop, at least the way that I make it. At this point, I want to start using my ribs. Um, throwing with ribs, and especially throwing with two ribs, both inside and outside, is, is sort of tricky, but it's definitely worth learning. I'm not an expert, but um, I'm still going to try. First, I'm just going to use the rib here, trying to smoothen the outside. See, and then I'm gonna scrape off some of this slip. It's also gonna stabilize my 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 whole sink here. Put. And the same thing on the inside. Now I'm a little bit in doubt of how thick I should make these balls because they're now getting a little bit thinner than I was expecting to make them. But then again, I don't want them to be so thick that they, um, they risk cracking. And you have to remember when you're dealing with a very white vessel, Give it time to get all the way around. It takes a little more than when you're working on a base couple, something that is smaller. Um, so it needs to get all the way around, otherwise it's gonna get uneven, of course. So now I'm starting to um, to expand it. Trying to keep it with a compressed rim and, of course, uh, circular. Just to make sure that I'm on the right path, I'm just going to check it. And right now it's uh, 33 centimeter wide, which means that it probably shouldn't be much wider for this um, sink. I'm doing a, a couple of different sinks. As I said, it's a journey. And um, these are actually for an order. Um, some of my friends are rebuilding their two bathrooms and they want nice sinks in both of them. One is a big one and one is a small one. This is for the smaller one. Um, so we're aiming for something like 30 centimeter. So I think it's, uh, it's getting closer now. And now it's uh, almost 35 centimeter. So um, with the shrink it at all, it probably shouldn't be much wider than this. Um, so I think now 
I'm going to start working a little more on the inside. So um, let me just reposition the camera. So now I'm going to work on the inside. And for that, <laughs> there's a little bit of a trick. Because um, when you're turning the wheel the way I am, I'm, 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 my dominant hand is my right hand. So um, I'm going anti-clockwise. And so uh, using the rib on the inner side, uh, I have to use my left hand. But if you switch to turning the other way, then you can uh, use your dominant hand. And of course, if you are left-handed, you turn it the other way around. But this makes it a lot easier because, of course, my right hand is uh, stronger and more precise. So this way, I can use this hand. I'm just supporting on the outside with a sponge. So, so you can see already now that's getting much better. Um, because as I said, it's important that I get a smooth inside. So, definitely getting there. I'm just going to switch back because now I'm just going to use the sponge here and um, I can use both hands for that. I'm not so concerned with this little bulb in here because all that is going to be cut away of course. So um, I'm more concerned with everything before that point. Uh, I will smooth it out just a little bit just, just to um, not confuse my vision. And at this point, I'm primarily focused on the inside. Um, because if I can avoid it, um, I don't want to trim anything in here. If I have to, I will. Um, but it would be nice to just uh, throw it um, in, in the shape that I want and with the curve that I want. The outside, I'm not so concerned with because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some trimming on that. See, now it's getting really nice and smooth. Little bit, there's a little bit of a shoulder here, so I want to see if I can um, I can fix that. Yeah, I think this is better. I mean, you can trim a bowl like this if you if you end up this is a very common problem for a bowl that it's very smooth here and very smooth here but you have a little bit of a shoulder here i think i got rid of it almost but if you do you it's an open form so it's quite easy to um to do a little bit of trimming um the day after or something 
And this stage is also sort of tricky because you want to have it wet enough uh, not to um, not to stick your fingers when you're turning it, but you don't want it to be soaking wet now because that's going to weaken the clay. And of course, this shape is a little more uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, it can <laughs> it can fall over. Uh, of course, these walls are, are quite thick, uh, which will help prevent that. But, but still, you don't want the clay to be too weak. Sometimes you need to kind of like take your finger and, and feel, does it feel smooth? And it does. So um, it's a little bit left here. I think that's fine. For smoothing, <laughs> I really like these mud tools, um, sponges. They don't soak up that much water, but they're very smooth and they're they're nice to um, to make things just very smooth. And um, so it works almost like a chamois, um, but um, yeah, somewhere between a chamois and a and a sponge. Yeah, I think we're getting um, almost there. I'm just gonna. Do the final uh, smoothing and, um, and then I'm going to leave it until it's leather hard. It could be it's summer now, so it's probably going to be this evening. Um, if it was winter, I would probably have to wait a day or something. But um, I think it's going to be in a few hours. <laughs> um, I just wanted to... Um, to not dry up, but um, just make it a little more stiff <laughs> um, before I cut the hole, um, because otherwise it's just going to smudge it all together. I don't want that. Also, I'm making sure that all the edges are rounded off, because sharp edges chip off much easier. Rounded edges are stronger. So, I think that's it for now. I'll get back to you in a few minutes when it's uh, dried up. It's still a little bit on the soft side, so I think it's still too muddy <laughs> for me to uh, cut the hole in the middle. But it's got, I think, the perfect uh, smoothness, uh, softness, to do a little bit of texturing on the outside, and for that, I'm going to use this, um, one of my favorite tools from MKM Tools, a US-based company that do these uh, rollers. And I'm going to roll it uh, just below the rim. Um, just going to do one round, I think. And um, to use this, you've got to wet it first. So I'm just going to dip it here. Because otherwise it's going to stick to the clay. We don't want that. You don't want it, of course, soaking wet, so I'm just going to drip it off like that. And then it's going to be a little bit tricky because I need to, of course, support it on the inside. I can always, you know, fix that. And then I'll add it in here. It's good to have like a, a support because I want to end up <laughs> at the same place when I get around. And, um, and you want to go really, really slow. So something like that. And it does take a bit of pressure to get the right uh, texture. So, I think that's going to look beautiful, especially with a glaze that sort of breaks uh, over this um, this texture. So yeah, I think that's gonna be great. And I can still trim this a little more round and I can trim this uh, below the texture, but of course on the actual texture, I can't touch it anymore. So um, that should be fine for now. I'm gonna leave it and dry just a little bit more before I do the inside 
um, hole. Even though it's a little bit on the wet side or the soft side, I think I'm gonna try and uh, cut the hole now. Worst case, I just have to do a little more cleanup, um, but I think it's gonna be fine. Um, I'm gonna use the fitting, the drain uh, fitting, and I'm gonna use a needle tool as a marker. So first, let me see if it works. I'll try and see if I can, I can uh, place this in the middle. Yeah, so now I have an approximately size of it, and of course, a lot of mud on my uh, my fitting. That's easy to remove. So next step is that I'm gonna um, cut out this size. It's a bit difficult because I have nothing <laughs> to support my arms with, so I have to try and. This is probably, most likely, going to be too small. Um, but I'd rather make it too small now and then um, have to open it a little more than um, trying to repair it if it's too big. So I'm gonna use a loop tool, a trim tool, to remove um, some of this. Try not to get it onto the inside of the box. It actually ended up a little thicker than I thought, but that's no problem. I'm gonna turn it around and trim it so um, I can easily um, make the button a little bit thinner if I feel like I have to. But as far as I've been able to, uh, I've been able to research. It's actually good to have it quite thick because um, there's going to be a pressure when you when you tighten this uh, fitting, and um, the clay have to be quite thick to um, to support that, not to break. So I'm just going to try and remove this. So, it actually looks pretty good, but of course, this is too small. Yeah. It's actually just about the right size, but I have to keep and, and take into account the shrinkage. So it definitely needs to be a little bit bigger. So for that, I'm gonna use another, um, another loop tool, another trim tool. I just have to be careful not to distort my, <laughs> my um, my rim either so oh that was the wrong place so I think I'm just gonna try and take off a few a few more millimeters and check again yeah now there's a I would say couple of millimeters, um, maybe just one millimeter all the way around. And I'm afraid that's not gonna be enough. So, um, because there is this shrinkage and uh, I would rather have a little bit too big than too small. So now we try again. Yeah, I don't know. Can you see this? I hope you can. But it's uh, now it's 
two millimeters, maybe three millimeters, all the way around. And I think even including the shrinkage, that's gonna be enough. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> so um, now the next step, I'll just clean this up a little bit. Um, and remember, this is gonna be covered by um, by this um, this part, the upper part of the of the fitting. So now I want to see how wide this is. I'm just going to press it down a little bit to get a feel of it. So um, now I can see that it is, ah, well, a little less than a centimeter. I hope you can see it here. Um, so for that, I want to cut away a little bit. So, yeah, yeah, it's not looking bad. Um, I still think I want to um, to smoothen out this a little bit. Remember, I'm on um, a new ground here. <laughs> I never tried this before. Do think that this is gonna work. Yeah. There's a couple of uh, little uh, crumbles here. I'm not gonna try and remove that now because when it dries, it will be very easy to remove it um, without getting any um, any marks there. Yeah? Just want to check again. Yeah, we still have the same slip there. Should be good. I think this is going to be good. At least now I'm going to leave it. Um, I did distort the rim a little bit. Not much. It's not more than I can um, I can fix. Um, But that's definitely one challenge that uh, I need to get in there and I have no support, I'm leaning and, well, I, um, I'm just gonna smoothen this and then um, I, can, I can fix that. It's no problem. These little crumbles, I'm not gonna do anything about now because if I try to take it away, I'm just gonna smudge it into the pot and um, when it dries, it will fly off. So um, the only thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to undercut it a little bit um, because I'm going to do that anyway when I trim it. I can just as well do it now. Just move. Just a little bit of this.
usually I wouldn't um, wire off uh, a pot like this, but I do need to be able to trim it. Um, and uh, also looking now, it's actually very good thickness here. It's uh, a little more than a centimeter and it's actually good. It just felt too deep <laughs> when I was making it, but um, I think it's okay. So now I'm just gonna try and wire it, wire it off. Um, So, and there's still, you know, a little bit left over here. That's going to be very easy to clean up uh, when I'm done. So that was my first sink. <laughs> and I actually think it turned out pretty well. Of course, it's not done yet. Um, I still need to trim it, uh, but I will, I will uh, dry it slowly. So I'm going to put some uh, newspaper here. That's going to keep the, the rim in place. And I'm going to cover it in plastic. Uh, for at least a couple of days until it's more leather hard, you know, so I can I can turn it around and I can trim. Uh, I'm not going to trim a foot, I'm just going to make sure that it's flat and even so it sits well on the bathroom uh, uh, table. And I'm going to trim a little bit on the sides, but not much, just to give it uh, the perfect shape. And uh, close to the foot, I'm going to use my normal trick because I want the glaze to look like it goes all the way down. But to avoid that it's running into, um, into my kill, I will cut this little 45 angle degree. You've probably seen me do that in other videos. That means that I can have the glaze look like it goes all the way down, but because of that little 5 millimeter 45 angle degree, uh, degree angle, um, it's not likely going to touch the bottom and I avoid that it will glue to my shelves. So um, that's the last step, but um, for now, this is uh, all I have. I'm going to do a few more uh, of these things. I'm gonna make some larger ones and some in the same size uh, for my friend's new house. Um, and of course, there will be a second <laughs> version of this video where I'll show you um, the results after the bisque fire and um, how it's going to look when it's glazed and of course finally <laughs> it's probably going to be another month or so when it's mounted in uh, this new bathroom so you can see how it looks and how it functions but for now i hope you enjoyed it and uh, i hope you will continue uh, follow me in this uh, new journey <laughs> and if you do uh, please subscribe or share write a comment maybe you have experience in making uh, things like this that you want to share as well. Anyway, I hope to see you soon again next Sunday. I will have another video coming up and uh, hopefully <laughs> my voice by that time is getting a little bit better. Have a good day.